Welcome to Funk You Up, the podcast that gives you the best of functional medicine, nutrition, and wellness in eight minutes or less. Welcome back to Funk You Up. This is Michelle Miller, clinical nutritionist. And Samantha Winicky, functional medicine health coach. Today's topic is prebiotics. So if you listened to our last episode, we spoke extensively on probiotics, both food and supplement versions, as well as the gut microbiome as a whole and kind of how important it is to maintain the integrity and health of that gut microbiome. Today, we want to go more into the prebiotics, which is really what feeds those good probiotics or good gut bugs that we want to help build and and flourish in the gut microbiome. So when we're talking about prebiotics, especially in food form, which of course is our favorite form, We're going to be talking about different types of fibers and where we can get those and find those in our diet. So to start off, there's soluble and insoluble fibers. With the soluble fibers, Samantha, give me a few of what your favorite prebiotic foods would be. So it's important to note that when we talk about these prebiotic foods, you do need to Be careful if you have sort of IBS-like symptoms. Um, There are certain diets that reduce these prebiotic fibers because they can cause a little bit more of gastrointestinal upset. But the goal is in the long term to be able to heal that gut lining so that you can have some of these prebiotic foods. So some of those, because they're more raw, they're like raw onions or chicory root or dandelion greens, Jerusalem artichokes, um, but also sweet potatoes and jicama are really good good examples of those. I love it. Absolutely. And again, if you're not incorporating any of these foods into your diet, consider, you know, using them a little bit more. This doesn't have to be a full overhaul of your diet. The beautiful thing about food with our gut health is that a little bit goes a long way. So just adding a little bit of like raw scallions to, you know, Mm -hmm. a meal can have a beneficial impact on that good probiotic and prebiotic benefit of feeding those good bugs. Yeah. Um, We also like to talk about resistant starch which also work as prebiotics, feeding the good gut bugs, but also can help to reduce inflammation and aiding digestion. Um, So Samantha, kick us off with some of our favorites there. So we love green bananas. So they're the ones that are unripened. And then also plantains are both good sources. And then things like cooked and cooled rice and potatoes and oats are good for that. Love those. It might seem odd, the idea of like, cooking potatoes or cooking rice and then letting it cool. But that does change the the aspect of the resistant starch within those particular foods. And so that is the best way to have the prebiotic benefit of those resistant starches. And just to go off of what Samantha kind of led in with, I, I couldn't agree more. I think there's certainly some diets or some GI environmental issues where somebody might not be doing well if they have IBS, if they have SIBO, they might not feel great with a lot of high prebiotic foods or some of these resistant starch fibers in their diet. And so that's when, you know, they will be on a diet that might remove or eliminate a lot of those. But of course, the goal is in the long run to heal the gut and get to a point where you are able to tolerate these because this is really a key way to encourage diversity of the gut microbiome and long term health. Right. You need to feed those good bacteria and this is their food. And then another important aspect of this is when your probiotics are eating these prebiotic foods, they create something called butyric acid. And so that's important because what that does is it makes it harder for some of those bacteria that we don't want a lot of in our gut to survive. So it creates this environment where um, it's more likely for the good probiotics to flourish and then less likely for some of those not so good bacteria. Absolutely. Kind of, I, I think about this almost like the bouncer at the club, like just letting the <laughs> VIPs and the good gut bugs, but he's making sure the bad ones, you know, kind of stay outside the, the bad gut bugs. Um, I love that. It's such a good point. And of course, we have, always have a food first approach. We want to get as many of these prebiotic foods through our diet. But I do think that there are some supplemental forms that are worth mentioning. One of my personal favorites is uh, prebiotic powder made by Natural Stacks. Um, and they use a resistant starch blend in that powder. And so again, 
I wouldn't recommend only taking that, but maybe using that in conjunction with a lot of these different foods. And again, like we're just as we would use with probiotic foods, with prebiotic foods, you just want to use them as a condiment to your natural diet, just enhancing the 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 meal, you know, one dish at a time to make sure they all have little components of things that'll help our good gut microbiome flourish a bit more. Gotcha. So adding a little bit of jicama, maybe a little bit of sauerkraut, some of these prebiotic and probiotic foods to each one of your meals every once in a while, that's going to help that gut to flourish. I love that. And getting as much diversity with your foods too. I mean, yeah, there's even good research on different types of uh, fruits and vegetables and the benefit that that can have on the gut microbiome. Again, we talk so often about how we don't know everything about the the bacteria in the gut, but I think as we learn more and more, we're going to find out that diversity is the key when it comes to probiotics, when it comes to prebiotics, and when it comes to diet as a whole. Gotcha. So just like you're rotating, we talked in the last episode. If you guys haven't listened to the um, episode on probiotics, you should definitely listen in on that. It'll make all this make a little bit more sense. But just like when you're rotating probiotics so that you can get different strains of that, it's, you should also rotate on your different prebiotics. Make sure you're getting different nutrients in there to feed your beneficial bacteria. You got it. And, and just like anything else, listen to your body if you do find, you know, if there's a particular food that doesn't sit well with you, even if it is prebiotic or probiotic benefits, you, you know, maybe you don't have a ton of that food or maybe you don't use that one. Listen to your body, use your intuition, but I I totally agree. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode of Funk You Up. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Physiologic NYC. And if you guys have any questions or topics you'd like for us to discuss, feel free to email it to us at funkyouup at physiologicnyc.com. And we'll use that as our next topic for our podcast. See you soon. Bye. You've been listening to Funk You Up. Be sure to like, review, and subscribe for more daily tips on living well.